In this third and final video looking at the game industry, we're going to take a look at employment within the games market. We've gotten a good feel for how big the overall global games market is. We also have a better idea of how big the games market in Europe is. But what effect has all this growth had on employment? To get a better look at this, let's look at some individual game projects in a bit more detail. In the early days of the video game industry, in the late 1970s and early 1980s, all it took to produce a blockbuster title was one or two entrepreneurial individuals with a good idea and the right technical skills. Most video game projects took a few months to complete and they were often self-funded. Elite, a hit game created in 1984, was developed by just two people, David Barbin and Ian Bell. Although set in space, it really was one of the first open world games where players were allowed to freely move through the game world. As we saw earlier, from the rapid growth of the overall market, gaming has become big business. As the size and scope of individual projects has grown, so has the level of investment needed to fund the rapid growth and employment required for the development of these larger projects. This led to the emergence of large publishers. They finance development studios in exchange for ownership of the resulting intellectual property. Independent studios are hired by publishers to produce video games. Increasing numbers can self-publish on the internet. They vary in size depending on the platforms they target, while video games for mobile phones can be developed by small teams. Tri AAA blockbusters for console and high-end PC require investments of up to 250 million euros. That's before marketing costs and hundreds of developers. In 2008, a company founded in Dundee in Scotland, Rockstar North, released another type of open world game, Grand Theft Auto 4. The project's teams now had grown to more than 300. This product would go on to sell 17 million copies for an estimated gross revenue of 669 million euros. When they released the hotly anticipated follow-up Grand Theft Auto 5 in September of 2013, the development team was now over 1,000 people. This would go on to be one of the most successful cultural products ever created. All of these figures can be somewhat overwhelming without context. Just how big has gaming become? And is it really part of the cultural mainstream? Let's compare Grand Theft Auto V with Avatar, one of the most successful films of all time. James Cameron's Avatar was released in December of 2009. Its approximate budget was $237 million. It would go on to make $2.8 billion globally. The biggest selling game is Grand Theft Auto V. Its budget was approximately $265 million and it would go on to generate an astonishing $6 billion in global revenue. I should at this point point out that comparing the profitability of games and film is not at all a straightforward process. They have very different business models and different revenue streams. However, even accounting for such things as a broader merchandising base for film and any future revenue from online or TV sales that Avatar might generate, it is clear that Grand Theft Auto is a much more profitable product. Grand Theft Auto V is in fact the most profitable cultural item of our time. This marks a key milestone in the growing importance of gaming to the cultural mainstream. The growth of projects in scale and complexity has led to the creation of many different specialised tasks and roles within game studios. The idea of the lone coder toiling away at creating a game remains alive thanks to the indie game market and the growth of mobile gaming, where a small team can still produce a successful video game. This can perhaps be best illustrated by the success of Minecraft, a million selling indie game created by a single Swedish game developer. However, even for smaller indie projects, you will need employees skilled in art, game design and computer programming roles, not to mention skills in project management, investment in funding and commercialization. Large scale projects are carried out by very large multidisciplinary teams 
with very diverse backgrounds. These teams, which can number several hundred for larger scale projects, will include many specialized roles, including computer programmers who produce the software, artists, animators, and other visual designers in charge of the visual look of the game world, gameplay designers who are responsible for how the user interacts with the game world, which is key for immersion and end user engagement. You will also need audio designers and music composers. Like any software, video games require strenuous usability testing and quality assurance, as well as careful project management to ensure that all of these components are integrated smoothly. Creating large scale games really requires many people with specialized skills and diverse backgrounds to co-design different elements of the game world. This has led to the creation of many of the highly skilled roles that you can see here. Game developers are represented nationally by individual national gaming bodies, such as Immert in Ireland, Tiga in the UK, and SNJV in France. At a European level, they are represented by the European Game Developer Federation. On their website noted here, you will find many interesting reports on the games industry in Europe. They are a pan-European representative body for 13 different national trade associations, representing 1,600 of more than 3,200 game development studios across Europe. From this map of Europe, we can see that game creation is very vibrant and active across all of Europe. With more than 40,000 people employed by game developers across the continent. The number of people indirectly employed by the sector is over 100,000 people. So what kind of companies is the sector comprised of? Looking at figures from the UK from a survey of over 220 companies, we can see that small companies dominate the sector. Just under three quarters have fewer than 25 permanent employees. That being said, relatively few employers account for a significant proportion of the workforce, with the largest four companies employing a third of the overall workforce in this survey sample. This is similar to other sectors of the entertainment and media industry and the wider cultural and creative industries, where there are generally many small SMEs within the market but the market tends to be dominated by a few very large and well-known companies. To recap, as the game market has grown, so have end user expectations, causing game projects to grow in scale and complexity. This has created many specialized high-skilled jobs. There are many game development companies throughout Europe, and they are an active and vibrant part of Europe's cultural and creative economy. Like many areas of the creative economy, employment in games is dominated by a few well-known large game companies. Most game companies are in fact small SMEs. Given the right funding and investment, they can see rapid growth and the need for more skilled employees within a short period of time. By breaking down the growth of the games market and by looking at some of the current employment needs, we can say that game development is growing in Europe and we will continue to see rising numbers of people employed by the games industry.